the pecos queen collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by betty b the pecos queen where the pecos river winds and turns in its journey to the sea from its white walls of sand and rock striving ever to be free near the highest railroad bridge that all these modern times have seen dwells fair young patty moorhead the pecos river queen she is known by every cowboy on the pecos river wide they know full well that she can shoot that she can rope and ride she goes to every round-up every cow work without fail looking out for her cattle branded walking hog on rail she made her start in cattle yes made it with her rope can tie down every maverick before it can strike a lope she can rope and tie and brand it as quick as any man she's voted by all cowboys an a one top cow hand across the comstock railroad bridge the highest in the west patty rode her horse one day a lover's heart to test for he told her he would gladly risk all dangers for her sake but the puncher wouldn't follow so she's still without a mate end of poem this recording is in the public domain Chapo, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Chapo, through rocky arroyas so dark and so deep, down the sides of the mountains so slippery and steep, you've good judgment, sure-footed, wherever you go. You're a safety conveyance, my little Chapo. Refrain. Chapo, my pony, Chapo, my pride, Chapo, my amigo, Chapo, I will ride. From Mexico's borders cross Texas Leno to the Salt Pecos River, I ride you, Chapo. Whether single or double or in lead of a team, over highways or byways or crossing a stream, you're always in fix and willing to go whenever you're called on my Chico, Chapo. You're a good roping horse. You are never jerked down when tied to a steer. You will circle him round. Let him once cross the string, and over he'll go. You sabe the business, my cow horse, Chapo. One day on the Lano a hailstorm began. The herds were stampeded, the horses all ran. The lightning, it glittered, a cyclone did blow. But you faced the sweet music, my little Chapo. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Top Hand, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. While you're all so frisky, I'll sing a little song. Think a little horn of whiskey will help the thing along? It's all about the Top Hand when he busted flat, bummin' round the town in his Mexican hat. He's laid up all winter and his pocketbook is flat. His clothes are all tatters, but he don't mind that. See him in town with a crowd that he knows, rollin' cigarettes and smokin' through his nose. First thing he tells you, he owns a certain brand, leads you to think he is a daisy hand. Next thing he tells you about his trip up the trail, all the way to Kansas to finish out his tail. Put him on a hoss, he's a handy hand to work. Put him in the brandin' pen, he's dead sure to shirk. With his natural leaf tobacco in the pockets of his vest, he'll tell you his California pants are the best. He's handled lots of cattle. Hasn't any fears, can draw his sixty dollars for the balance of his years. Put him on herd, he's a cussin' all day. Anything he tries, it's sure to get away. When you have a round-up, he tells it all about. He's going to do the cuttin' and you can't keep him out. If anything goes wrong, he lays it on the screws, says the lazy devils were trying to take a snooze. When he meets a greener, he ain't afraid to rig, stands him on a chuck box and makes him dance a jig. Waves a loaded cutter, makes him sing and shout. He's a regular Ben Thompson when the boss ain't about. When the boss ain't about, he leaves his leggings in camp. He swears a man who wears them is worse than a tramp. Says he's not caring for the wages he earns, for dad's rich in Texas, got wagon loads to burn. But when he goes to town, he's sure to take it in. He's always been dreaded wherever he's been. He rides a fancy horse. He's a favorite man can get more credit than a common waddy can. When you ship the cattle, he's bound to go along, to keep the boss from drinking and see that nothing's wrong. Wherever he goes, catch on to his name. He likes to be called with a handle to his name. He's always primping with a pocket-looking glass. From the top to the bottom, he's a bold jackass.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. California Trail, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Bristol Chilton, on November 5th, 2017. List all you California boys, and open wide your ears, for now we start across the plains with a herd of mules and steers. Now, bear in mind before you start that you'll eat jerked beef, not ham, and antelope steak, oh cuss the stuff, it often proves a sham. You cannot find a stick of wood on all this prairie wide. Whene'er you eat, you've got to stand or sit on some old bull hide. It's fun to cook with buffalo chips or mesquite green as corn. If I'd once known what I know now, I'd have gone around Cape Horn. The women have the hardest time who immigrate by land, for when they cook out in the wind, they're sure to burn their hand. Then they scold their husbands round, get mad and spill the tea, I'd have thanked my stars if they'd not come out upon this bleak prairie. Most every night we put out guards to keep the Indians off. When night comes round, some heads will ache, and some begin to cough. To be deprived of help at night, you know is mighty hard, but every night there's someone sick to keep from standing guard. Then they're always talking of what they've got and what they're going to do. Some will say they're content, for I've got as much as you. Others will say, I'll buy or sell, I'm damned if I care which. Others will say, boys, buy him out, for he doesn't own a stitch. Old rawhide shoes are hell on corns while tramping through the sands, and driving jackass by the tail, damn the overland. I would as leaf be on a raft at sea, and there at once be lost. John, let's leave the poor old mule, we'll never get him across. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bronk Peeler Song, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Annie Rue. Bronk Peeler Song I've been upon the prairie, I've been upon the plain, I never rid a steamboat, nor a double cinched up train, but I've driven my eight up to wagon that were locked three in a row, and that through blinded sandstorms, and all kinds of wind and snow. Chorus Goodbye, Liza, poor gal, goodbye, Liza Jane, Goodbye, Liza, poor gal. She died out on the plain. There never was a place I've been had any kind of wood. We burn the roots of bar grass and think it's very good. I've never tasted homemade bread, nor cakes, nor must like that. But I know fried dough and beef pulled from red-hot tallow fat. I hate to see the wire fence a-closin' up the range, and all this fillin' in the trail with people that is strange. We fellers don't know how to plow nor reap the golden grain, but to round up steers and brand the cows to us was all as plain. So when this blasted country is all closed in with wire, and all the top as trot grass is burnin' in Saul's fire, I hope the settlers will be glad when rain hits the land, and all us cow dogs are in hell with a set join hand in hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Deer Hunt Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org By Tim Watkins One pleasant summer day It came a storm of snow I picked my old gun And a-hunting I did go I came across a herd of deer And I trailed them through the snow I trailed them to the mountains Where straight up they did go I trailed them o'er the mountains I trailed them to the brim and I trailed them to the waters where they jumped in to swim. I cocked both my pistols and underwater went to kill the fattest of them deer. That was my whole intent. While I was under water five hundred feet or more, I fired both my pistols like cannons did they roar. I picked up my venison and out of water came to kill the balance of them deer. I thought it would be fun. So I bent my gun in circles and fired round a hill, and out of three or four deer, ten thousand I did kill. Then I picked up my venison, and on my back I tied, and as the sun came passing by, I hopped up there to ride. The sun she carried me o'er the globe, so merrily I did roam, that in four and twenty hours I landed safe at home. And the money I received for my venison and skin, 
i taken it all to the barn door, and it would not all go in. And if you doubt the truth of this, I tell you how to know. Just take my trail and go my rounds, as I did long ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tim Watkins. Windy Bill, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Fascio. Windy Bill was a Texas man. Well, he could rope, you bet. He swore the steer he couldn't tie. Well, he hadn't found him yet. But the boys, they knew of an old black steer, a sort of an old outlaw, that ran down in the malpays at the foot of a rocky draw. This old black steer had stood his ground with punchers from everywhere, so they bet old Bill at two to one that he couldn't quite get there. Then Bill brought out his old gray hoss, his withers and back were raw, and prepared to tackle the big black brute that ran down in the draw. With his brazen bit and his samstack tree, his chaps and taps to boot, and his old magway tied hard and fast, Bill swore he'd get the brute. Now first Bill sort of sauntered round, old Blackie began to paw, then threw his tail straight in the air and went drifting down the draw. The old gray plug flew after him, for he'd been eating corn, and Bill he piled his old magway right round old Blackie's horns. The old gray hoss he stopped right still, the cinches broke like straw, and the old magway and the samstack tree went drifting down the draw. Bill, he lit in a flint rock pile, his face and hands were scratched. He said he thought he could rope a snake, but he guessed he'd met his match. He paid his bets like a little man without a bit of jaw, and load old Blackie was the boss of anything in the draw. There's a moral to my story, boys, and that you all must see. Whenever you go to tie a snake, don't tie it to your tree, but take your dolly welters cordon to California law, and you'll never see your old rim fire go drifting down the draw. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wild Rovers, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Fascio. Come all you wild rovers, and listen to me, while I retail to you my sad history. I'm a man of experience, your favors to gain. Oh, love has been the ruin of many a poor man. When you are single, and living at your ease, you can roam this world over, and do as you please. You can roam this world over, and go where you will, and slyly kiss a pretty girl, and be your own still. But when you are married, and living with your wife, you've lost all the joys and comforts of life. Your wife, she will scold you, your children will cry, and that will make Papa look withered and dry. You can't step aside, boys, to speak to a friend, without your wife at your elbow saying, what does this mean? Your wife, she will scold, and there is sad news. Dear boys, take warning. Tis a life to refuse. If you chance to be riding along the highway, and meet a fair maiden, a lady so gay, with red rosy cheeks and sparkling blue eyes, oh heavens, what a tumult in your bosom will rise. One more request, boys before we must part. Don't place your affections on a charming sweetheart. She'll dance before you, your favors to gain. Oh, turn your back on them with scorn and disdain. Come close to the bar, boys. We'll drink all around. We'll drink to the pure, if any be found. We'll drink to the single, for I wish them success. Likewise to the married, for I wish them no less. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Life in a Half Breed Shack, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Tis life in a half breed shack, the rain comes pouring down, drip drops the mud through the roof, and the wind comes through the wall. A tenderfoot cursed his luck and feebly cried out, Ya! Refrain. Ya, ya, I want to go home to my ma. Ya, ya, this bloomin' country's a fraud. Ya, ya, I want to go home to my ma. He tries to kindle a fire when it's forty-five below. He aims to chop at a log and amputates his toe. He hobbles back to the shack and feebly cries out, Ya. He gets on a bucking cayuse and thinks to flourish around, but the buzzard head takes to bucking and lays him flat out on the ground. As he picks himself up with a curse, he feebly cries out, Ya. He buys all the town lots he can get in the wrong end of Calgary. And he waits and he waits for the boom until he's dead broke, like me. He couldn't get any tick, so he feebly cries out, Ya. He couldn't do any work, and he wouldn't know how if he could. So the police run him up for a vag and set him to bucking wood. As he sits in the guardroom cell, he feebly cries out, Ya! Come all ye tender feet and listen to what I say. If you can't get a government job, you had better remain where you be. Then you won't curse your luck and cry out feebly, Ya! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road to Cook's Peak, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Road to Cook's Peak. If you'll listen a while, I'll sing you a song, and as it is short, it won't take me long. There are some things of which I will speak concerning the stage on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak? On the road to Cook's Peak. Concerning the stage on the road to Cook's Peak. It was in the morning at 8.45. I was hooking up all ready to drive. Out where the miners for minerals seek. With two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak, on the road to Cook's Peak, with two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. With my two little mules I jog along, and try to cheer them with ditty and song, o'er the wide prairie where coyotes sneak, while driving the stage on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak, on the road to Cook's Peak, while driving the stage on the road to Cook's Peak. Sometimes I have to haul heavy freight. Then it is I get home very late. In rain or shine, six days in the week, tis the same little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak, on the road to Cook's Peak, tis the same little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. And when with the driving of stage I am through, I will to my two little mules bid adieu, and hope that those creatures so gentle and meek will have a good friend on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak? On the road to Cook's Peak. We'll have a good friend on the road to Cook's Peak. Now all kind friends that travel about Come take a trip on the Wallace stage route. With a plenty of grit, they never get weak. Those two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak. On the road to Cook's Peak. Those two little mules on the road to Cook's Peak. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Arapaho or Buckskin Joe, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. 
twas a calm and peaceful evening in a camp called arapaho and the whiskey was a runnin with a soft and gentle flow the music was a ringing and a dance hall cross the way and the dancers was a swinging just as close as they could lay people gathered round the tables a betting with their wealth and nearby stood a stranger who had come there for his health he was a peaceful little stranger though he seemed to be unstrung for just before he'd left his home he'd separated with one lung nearby at a table sat a man named hanky dean a tougher man says hanky buckskin chaps had never seen but hanky was a gambler and he was plumb sure to lose for he had just departed with a sun-dried stack of blues he rose from the table on the floor his last chip flung and cast his fiery glimmers on the man with just one lung no wonder i've been losin every bet i've made tonight when a sucker and a tenderfoot was between me and the light look here little stranger do you know who i am yes and i don't care a copper-colored dam the dealers stopped their dealing and the players held their breath for words like those to hanky were a sudden flirt with death listen gentle stranger i'll read my pedigree i'm known on handling tender feet and worser men than thee the lions on the mountains i've drove them to their lairs the wildcats are my playmates and i've wrestled grizzly bears why the centipedes can't mar my tough old hide and rattlesnakes have bit me and crawled off and died i'm as wild as the horse that roams the range the moss grows on my teeth and wild blood flows through my veins i'm wild and woolly and full of fleas and never curried below the knees now little stranger if you'll give me your address how would you like to go by fast mail or express the little stranger who was leaning on the door picked up a hand of playing cards that were scattered on the floor picking out the five of spades he pinned it to the door and then stepped back some twenty paces or more he pulled out his life preserver and with a one two three four blotted out a spot with every shot for he had travelled with a circus and was a fancy pistol shot i have one more left kind sir if you wish to call the play then hanky stepped up to the stranger and made a neat apology why the lions in the mountains that was nothing but a joke never mind about the extra you're a bad shootin man and i'm a meek little child and harmless as a lamb End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rounded Up in Glory, collected by John Lomax. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I have been thinking today, as my thoughts began to stray, of your memory to me worth more than gold as you ride across the plain, mid the sunshine and the rain you will be rounded up in glory by and by chorus you will be rounded up in glory by and by you will be rounded up in glory by and by when the milling time is o'er and you will stampede no more when he rounds you up within the master's fold as you ride across the plain with the cowboys that have fame and the storms and the lightning flash by we shall meet to part no more upon the golden shore when he rounds us up in glory by and by may we lift our voices high to that sweet by and by and be known by the brand of the lord for his property we are and he will know us from afar when he rounds us up in glory by and by end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Drunkard's Hell, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Michael Munnett. The Drunkard's Hell It was on a cold and stormy night I saw and heard an awful sight. The lightning flashed and thunder rolled around my poor benighted soul. I thought I heard a mournful sound among the groans still lower down. That awful sight no tongue can tell is this, 
the place called Drunkard's Hell. I thought I saw the gulf below where all the dying drunkards go. I raised my hand and said to tell it was the place called Drunkard's Hell. I traveled on and got there at last and started to take a social glass. But every time I started, well, I thought about the Drunkard's Hell. I dashed it down to leave that place and started to seek redeeming grace. I felt like Paul. At once I'd pray till all my sins were washed away. I then went home to change my life and see my long-neglected wife. I found her weeping o'er the bed because her infant babe was dead. I told her not to mourn and weep because her babe had gone to sleep. Its happy soul had fled away to dwell with Christ till endless day. I'd taken her by her pale white hand. She was so weak she could not stand. I laid her down and breathed a prayer that God might bless and save her there. I then went to the temperance hall and taken a pledge among them all. They'd taken me in with a willing hand and taken me in as a temperance man. So seven long years have passed away since first I bowed my knees to pray. So now I live a sober life with a happy home and a loving wife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ramblin' Boy, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. Ramblin' Boy, I am a wild and roving lad, a wild and ramblin' lad I'll be, for I do love a little girl, and she does love me. Oh, Willie, oh, Willie, I love you so, I love you more than I do know, and if my tongue could tell you so, I'd give the world to let you know. When Julia's old father came this to know, that Julia and Willie were loving so, he ripped and swore among them all, and swore he'd use a cannonball. She wrote Willie a letter with her right hand, and sent it to him in the western land. Oh, read these lines, sweet William, dear, for this is the last of me you will hear. He read those lines while he wept and cried, ten thousand times I wish I had died. He read those lines while he wept and said, ten thousand times I wish I were dead. When her old father came home that night, he called for Julia, his heart's delight. He ran up the stairs and her door he broke, and found her hanging by her own bed rope, and with his knife he cut her down, and in her bosom this note he found, saying, Dig my grave both deep and wide, and bury sweet Willie by my side. They dug her grave both deep and wide, and buried sweet Willie by her side, and on her grave set a turtle dove to show the world they died for love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Brigham Young One, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. I'll sing you a song that has often been sung about an old Mormon they called Brigham Young. Of wives he had many, who were strong in the lungs, which Brigham found out by the length of their tongues. Rituralalural. Oh, sad was the life of a Mormon to lead, yet Brigham adhered all his life to his creed. He said twas such fun, and true without doubt, to see the young wives knock the old ones about. Rituralalural. One day as old Brigham sat down to his dinner, he saw a young wife who was not getting thinner. When the elders cried out one after the other, by the holy she wants to go home to her mother, Rituralalural. Old Brigham replied, which can't be denied, he couldn't afford to lose such a bride. Then do not be jealous, but banish your fears, for the tree is well known by the fruit that it bears, Rituralalural that I love one and all you very well know, then do not provoke me or my anger will show. What must be our fate if found here in a row, if Uncle Sam comes with his rowdy dow dow, ritu row law la row. Then cease all your quarrels and do not despair, to meet Uncle Sam I will quickly prepare. Hark I hear Yankee Doodle played over the hills, ah, here is the enemy with their powder and pills, ritu row law la row. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Brigham Young Two, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. Now Brigham Young is a Mormon bold and a leader of the Roaring Rams, and shepherd of a lot of fine tub sheep and a lot of pretty little lambs. Oh, he lives with his five and forty wives in the city of the Great Salt Lake, where they breed and swarm like hens on a farm and cackle like ducks to a drake. Oh, Brigham, Brigham Young, it's a miracle how you survive, with your roaring rams and your pretty little lambs and your five and forty wives. Number forty-one is about sixteen, number one is sixty and three, and they make such a riot how he keeps them quiet is a downright mystery to me. For they clatter and they chaw and they jaw, 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 and each has a different desire. It would aid the renown of the best shop in town to supply them with half they desire. Now Brigham Young was a stout man once, and now he is thin and old. And I am sorry to state he is bald on the pate, which once had a covering of gold. For his oldest wives won't have white wool, and his young ones won't have red. So with tearing it out and taking turn about, they have torn all the hair off his head. Now the oldest wives sing songs all day, and the young ones all sing songs. And amongst such a crowd he has it pretty loud, and are noisy as Chinese gongs. And when they advance for a Mormon dance, he is filled with the direst alarms, for they are sure to end the night in a tabernacle fight to see who has the fairest charms. Now if any man here envies Brigham Young, let him go to the Great Salt Lake. And if he has the leisure to enjoy his pleasure, he'll find it a great mistake. One wife at a time, so says my rhyme, is enough, there's no denial. So before you strive to be Lord of Forty-Five, take two for a month on trial. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Gray Mule Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo the old gray mule i am an old man some sixty years old and that you can plainly see but when i was a young man ten years old they made a stable boy of me i have seen the fastest horses that made the fastest time but i never saw one in all my life like that old gray mule of mine on a sunday morn i dress myself a goin out to ride now my old mule is as gray as a bird, then he is full of his pride. He never runs away with you, never cuts up any shine, for the only friend I have on earth is this old gray mule of mine. Now my old gray mule is dead and gone, gone to join the heavenly band, with silver shoes upon his feet to dance on the golden strand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fools of Forty Nine, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. The Fools of Forty Nine. When gold was found in forty eight, the people thought was gas, and some were fools enough to think the lumps were only brass. But soon they all were satisfied and started off to mine. They bought their ships, came round the horn, in the days of forty-nine. Refrain. When they thought of what they'd been told, when they started after gold, that they never in the world would make a pile. The people all were crazy then. They didn't know what to do. They sold their farms for just enough to pay their passage through. They bid their friends a long farewell, said, Dear wife, don't you cry. I'll send you home the yellow lumps, a piano for to buy. The poor, the old, and the rotten scows were advertised to sail from New Orleans with passengers, but they must pump and bail. The ships were crowded more than full, and some hung on behind, and others dived off from the wharf and swam till they were blind. With rusty pork and sneaked beef and rotten wormy bread, the captains, too, that never were up as high as the main masthead, 
the steerage passengers would rave and swear they'd paid their passage and wanted something more to eat besides bologna sausage then they began to cross the plain with oxen hollering ha and steamers then began to run as far as panama and there for months the people stayed that started after gold and some returned disgusted with the lies that they'd been told the people died on every route they sickened and died like sheep and those at sea before they died were launched into the deep and those that died while crossing the plains fared not so well as that for a hole was dug and they was thrown in along the miserable plat the ships at last began to arrive and the people began to inquire they say that flour is a dollar a pound do you think it will be any higher and to carry their blankets and sleep outdoors it seemed so very droll both tired and mad without a cent they damned the lousy hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain a rip and trip collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org a rip and trip you go aboard a leaky boat and sail for san francisco you've got to pump to keep her afloat you've got that by jingo the engine soon begins to leak but nary a thing to oil her impossible to stop the leak rip goes the boiler the captain on the promenade looking very savage steward and the cabin maid fighting about a cabbage all about the cabin floor passengers lie seasick steamer bound to go ashore rip goes the physic pork and beans they can't afford the second cabin passengers the cook has tumbled overboard with fifty pounds of sassengers the engineer a little tight bragging on the mail line finally gets into a fight rip goes the engine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the happy miner collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org the happy miner i'm a happy miner i love to sing and dance i wonder what my love would say if she could see my pants with canvas patches on my knees and one upon the stern i'll wear them when i'm digging here and home when i return refrain so i get in a jovial way i spend my money free and i've got plenty will you drink a lager beer with me she writes about her poodle dog but never thinks to say oh do come home my honey dear i'm pining all away i'll write her half a letter then give the ink a tip if that don't bring her to her milk i'll coolly let her rip they wish to know if i can cook and what i have to eat and tell me should i take a cold be sure and soak my feet but when they talk of cooking i'm mighty hard to beat i've made ten thousand loaves of bread the devil couldn't eat i like a lazy partner so i can take my ease lay down and talk of golden home as happy as you please without a thing to eat or drink away from care and grief i'm fat and sassy ragged too and tough as spanish beef no matter whether rich or poor i'm happy as a clam i wish my friends at home could look and see me as i am with woolen shirt and rubber boots and mud up to my knees and lice as large as chili beans fighting with the fleas i'll mind for half an ounce a day perhaps a little less but when it comes to china pay i cannot stand the press like thousands there i'll make a pile if i make one at all about the time the allied forces take sir bastopol end of poem this recording is in the public domain the california stage company collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org the california stage company there's no respect for youth or age on board the california stage but pull and haul about the sheets as bedbugs do about the sheets refrain they started as a thieving line in eighteen hundred and forty nine all opposition they defy so the people must root hog or die you're crowded in with chinamen as fattening hogs are in a pen and what will more a man provoke is musty plug tobacco smoke the ladies are compelled to sit with dresses and tobacco spit 
the gentlemen don't seem to care but talk on politics and swear the dust is deep in summer time the mountains very hard to climb and drivers often stop and yell get out all hands and push up hill the drivers when they feel inclined will have you walking on behind and on your shoulders lug a pole to help them out some muddy hole they promise when your fare you pay you'll have to walk but half the way then add aside with cunning laugh you'll have to push the other half end of poem this recording is in the public domain New National Anthem, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. My country, tis of thee, land where things used to be so cheap, we croak. Land of the mavericks, land of the puncher's tricks. Thy culture inroad pricks the hide of this peeler boak. Some of the punchers swear that what they eat and wear takes all their calves. Others vow that they eat only once a day, jerked beef and prairie hay, washed down with tallow salves. These salty dogs but crave to pull them out the grave, just one Kiowa spur, they know they still will dine, on flesh and beef the time. But give us, Lord Divine, one hen-fruit stir. Our Father's land with thee, best trails of liberty, we chose to stop. We don't exactly like so soon to henceward hike, but hell will take the pike if this don't stop. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Cowboy Songs and Other Frontier Ballads. Collected by John A. Lomax.